Good morning, Lou. Good morning, Lou. Uh, look, I've been doing my research about you, and I just love reading you the history and your long history here in Canberra. But I was crafting my introduction. I thought, Lish, you've got two experts on each other here. Um, I would love it if you could introduce each other. Grace? Okay. Um, hello, Canberra. This is my wonderful father, Angelo Costa, who has been in Canberra since he was about five years old and was introduced to horses as a young boy. And ever since then, he's never let them out of his sight. He's... Knowledge and expertise around horses, I think, surpasses anybody else in my world. And maybe um, other people would agree that the way he works with horses is on a level that is so um, intuitive, deep, and he understands them like a psychologist might understand a person. He... um, can interpret their behaviour and their communication unlike anybody else. It's kind of like (laughs) maybe a horse has come through him some way and he has changed so many horses' lives throughout the years. Uh, A lot of people have brought their misbehaved um, or uneducated or um, bad mannered horse to him so they he could so called fix it. Angelo, fix my horse. There has been no horse that's been thrown at my dad that he can't turn around and he'll take on any challenge, um, even the scary ones. <laughs> he'll put his <laughs> hand up and say, Oh, that's no worries. I've got this. <laughs> and he will, yeah, his understanding of horses is just um, beyond anything. I don't think you would come across many horse owners that bother to observe horses in a way that dad does and has in the past. That is a wonderful introduction. Thank you, Grace. What a, what a lovely thing to hear. It's quite, pra- quite, quite and fabulous praise, Angelo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now Thank you, you have guys. to. Re- <laughs> it is, and I'm, we've got to explore that story of how you came to be such a wonderful horseman, Angelo. Mm. Grace, you have a right of reply now. Yeah. <laughs> Good Thank luck. You. Thank you, Grace. What a wonderful child you've been to your dad. And uh, when, uh, yeah, what can I say? When we started off, you were just about to leave school, and you. You uh, chose the field of art, and I thought, as a father, art. My experience of arty people are people with long hair, <laughs> painted three different colours, and uh, I thought my daughter's going to go be an artist because I didn't understand it any further than that. Then when you changed it over to, so you said you're going to be a photographer, I thought, well, I don't know whether that's much better. Because, same thing, I didn't understand photography. Uh, and you've introduced me into good photography. There's a, I've realised that these selfies that we take are beautiful, but you've gone down into a lot deeper through the art that has pushed you through to excel far greater than I ever expected. And I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Takes two. This is my first takes two. And I just, I met Grace at TEDx and she gave this most wonderful talk about her exhibition, uh, which combines both her family love of horses and that love of photography. And she spoke so wonderfully of her dad and that connection. I thought this is just, I have to meet them both together to get that story. Angelo, Grace mentioned you came out to Australia or came to Canberra when you were five. Yeah, 1954 we arrived and, um, yeah. Where from? Italy. Yeah, and uh, I was uh, very, very lucky to meet a very dear friend. We've been friends ever since, a gentleman by the name of Ray Hawk. Uh, We're still very close. I admire him as one of the greatest horsemen uh, I've met, uh, but at, as a kid, you don't know any of this. He just uh, was he. Did you meet him at school? No, down in my street. Oh, he rode a horse down my street. <laughs> <laughs> so he was the first horseman you met. Yes, 
He Australia. was on a pony on the back of a pony. No, yeah, he was on the back of a pony. Rode past. I couldn't speak English. He, you know, I didn't not quite understand him, but we communicated as kids will. And uh, he threw me up on the horse, and I've never been off one since. And uh, that started the relationship with um, horses that Ray introduced me to, and we're having lunch. Uh, we went out to dinner the other night, him and his wife, and we're reminiscing about those times. So uh, how, does a, how does a young kid in Canberra, young Italian kid... And it, yeah, couldn't speak English. We just arrived in Australia. and uh, Whose horses did you ride in those, in those ra- early in go- raised, races? Raised he, had a, he had a couple of horses. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's always been with horses and introduced me to him, and it's a, one of the... I don't know what you call it, weird or just associations that we've never, uh, never left each other's company. And if we want to advise, he's been my mentor. And Grace mentioned mm. that you have this spirit, this sort of spirit that connects with a horse. When did you see that? Um, I went, I was having trouble with a particular horse uh, that I was uh, starting off, his little colt. And he had a bit of a bad attitude that I couldn't communicate with. So I went and seen a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Wilton in Sydney, in Kasula. And um, I asked Jim, telling him the problems I had with his horse. And uh, he said, yeah, son, come up and we'll have a chat. And I went up there. I left here at four o'clock in the morning. And drives up. And meets him there at seven because that's what time he said to be there. And we talked all day about every all his horses and never mind, never come up into any conversation. And I thought, well, gee, that was a waste of a day until I drove back to Goulburn. Gets to Goulburn, I was quite furious. And actually all the way from Casula to Goulburn, thinking this old bloke never told me anything. But what he did, he taught me to think. He was telling me all the, he was showing me what he could do, things which was just, we'll never see the likes in the wild in, the, in our lifetimes again, to what he could do with horses. And what he was showing me, you've got to, try, you've got to do this. So I, from, Cam- from Goulburn to Canberra, I whole, thought a whole new life has turned around and I've just got to be, a, I'm teaching, I would want to teach everybody whatever I can show them to understand horses and what you can do with them. If you understand them mentally, physical, it's the easy bit. Blake gets on with a, you know, with a pair of spurs and say, oh, this will make it go forward and, and uh, the whip will make it go forward, but there's a hell of a lot more to it. If you understand the mental, the way a horse thinks, the way he loves to think, and if he can communi- if you can understand his communication, um, and that's the time that it turned my life around to inspire me just to get better and better and better. How did you learn that? Because, Grace, I understand that when you were a young girl, you had a fear of You were a bit afraid of horses. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't understand their language. Mm. And what Dad's talking about is understanding the horse's language and treating them in their language, speaking to them in their language, not speaking to them in a human language. So my fear was a misunderstanding. I didn't understand their language. I didn't, I was, they're just intimidating. They're huge, especially dad's thoroughbreds would, you know, scare me and give me butterflies being around them. And I used to hate it when dad would ask me to catch one and lead it back to the yard and I'd be (laughs) so nervous, but I didn't understand their language. And it's taken me a long time to watch my father, train them, educate them, um, step by step. So then I can understand what, what they're thinking. And that's the key is understanding what they think and they think in the wild. Mm. So what is that? What do we do wrong? Because I, uh, I grew up with horses but didn't ever – I was a terrible horseman. I was always sort of at a Jim Carner sort of falling underneath the horse <laughs> and ride wobbling about. What do we get wrong with horses that we don't, we haven't we don't got, understand? We're, we're missing feel. We're missing f- the feel. It's uh, – how would I explain it? When you've got a dancing partner on a dance floor and the music's, you're in rhythm. You've got a dancing partner that you dance on the floor. If it's no rhythm there, 
It just doesn't connect. You can love the person that you're dancing with, but if it doesn't connect, it doesn't connect. Horses are exactly the same. As soon as you've got to get on, if you don't connect, you're riding a something. It could be a camel. It could be anything. Yep. If you don't feel the horse underneath you and you don't understand that what leg's going forward or whether it's left or right leg, the angle, the, 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 the position that he is, where he is, where his legs are, you're just a person sitting on a horse. And how do you connect? How you connect? Well, but get explain something somebody like myself that can Ex- explain what's happening, feeling what's yep. happened. I can't. When we say feel, I've often talked to other horsemen, and uh, we say, "Gee, if we could only sell a bucket full of feel." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we, Is it we, just you got to you time on the horse, time and on a horse, and listening, but and, good time yeah. on a horse. Yep. Not just on a horse because I've had a lot of people have ridden a lot further than I have, but. Have they felt what they're riding? You know? Yeah. It, yeah. Me, uh, me, me mate Ray that we were talking about before, um, he, he's he got such a feel for a horse that he'll tell tell me that something's r- going to happen before it happens. Now we hear this term horse whisperer, and when I mentioned it to I met Angelo, Angelo in the green room, and mm. he shook my hand. He's got hands like... Spades, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> strong handshake, and we sort of got to talking about horse whisper, and you sort of cringed, and you went, "Oh!" And even natural horsemanship, because we think of that that mm. communication between a mm. horse mm. and a human as some sort of thing, yeah. and you cringed at that. What, 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 what is it then? Um, as I say, you, you've got to yeah. once you ride a horse and understand it more. That's the feel you that's get. The feel. Just, if you're frightened of a horse, do they do they feel that and makes it more difficult to connect? Like with with Grace, do, do you reckon they sniffed your fear? <laughs> <laughs> Is it too bad? No. There's many more of these horses around. You've got to get used to it. They don't. Yeah, they don't. Uh, it's not as easy as that. But what they do know is you're not giving them the right vibes. They don't understand that you're fear. But what they do know is, oh, he's not doing. He's not pressing the right buttons. Yep. He's not letting me know that you're going to get on. He just hops on. Yep. You know, if you let the horse know, I've never been bucked off a horse that I've, he's, he's given me permission to get on him. Yep. But if you think that you can ride any buck jumping horse, for argument's sake, well, guess what? <laughs> the <laughs> horse will win. <laughs> Eventually. Does it make you a better buck, buck jumper? <laughs> no. Have you ever been a buck jumper, a rodeo rider? No, no, no. no. If, uh, far opposite. I've, yep. I've tried my hardest to stop it. Mm. Mm. And uh, yeah, The opposite and, of what you believe a horse should Yes. It, it, it still fascinates me today that they can... Um, allow me to get on their backs. They don't need to. They don't have to. But they will accept you if you um, approach them in a manner that they're accustomed to. And also leadership. Leadership. They want a leader. They'll accept you on their back if they know you're leading them in the right direction. If you just hop on, he says, well, Jesus, where do I go from here? Well, he'll take over. The horse's natural instinct is to take over. Mm. Then you say, oh, he's a, he's a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> My guests this morning on ABC Radio Canberra, Grace Costa and her dad, Angelo Costa. Grace is a fabulous photographer. Grace, that, that knowing that fear of horses and then doing this exhibition, Horse, which was in 2016, uh, if anyone has had a chance, to, if they're near a computer, just type in Grace Costa and horse and little images of the most magnificent uh, creatures will pop up on your screen. You did it up at Mount Stromlo and the logistics to me sound immense, just getting all these horses up and in a position to take a photo because you've had me some photos here. They're all, none of them, they're all, how would you say, a naked horse. They're not in bridles or halters. They're just standing there proud against the backdrop of the burnt out um, observatory. Tell us about that project. Now that I think about the logistics of that project, I would never do it again. <laughs> you nearly got me into trouble. <laughs> yeah. After that, oh, that, that um, I'll tell you a sneaky story. <laughs> After uh, um, some time whilst I had the exhibition at Nishi Gallery, 
I said to dad, oh, I need to make the opportunity um, extend while I've got the keys to this gallery <laughs> because I'm interested in photographing horses inside urban environments. I thought, what a great time to do it now that I've got the gallery. Hanging on the walls were the portraits of the horses. I said to dad, oh, will you help me? I need one of your horses. We're going to do it Wednesday afternoon. Bring We're going to bring him to the Nisha gallery inside. and <laughs> take a portrait of him inside. <gasps> I haven't told anyone. We'll just do it. It'll be fine. If he makes a mess, I'll clean it up. I will scrub it <laughs> until it's sparkling and nobody will know that was a horse in there. So one Wednesday afternoon, I was still in my work clothes. I went to um, dad's place and helped wash his horse. And we just pretended it was normal and walked in there <laughs> with no D'Artagnan. <laughs> and Dad was worried that we we're going to get caught by the police. <laughs> and I said, there's no police around do that you area. Your float? Do you pla- park, park your float in the hotel hotel or we something? We sort of double park the double float park. for an hour. Because there's no parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a lot of people walking past that uh, gallery because there's a government department nearby and they were looking through the window, but I guess they just assumed we had permission. <laughs> so we just kept on going and, um, you got the horse in there, took a beautiful photo. Yeah, I've never seen the photo. I've, we, uh, have you yeah, I the... haven't really put it anywhere. Oh, yeah. You have to share. Have to destroy you. the evidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it was a good it, adventure. It, it maintained a respectable, um, it withheld from. No, no, I had leave. to clean it up. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, I don't want to say that. They won't let me back in the Nisha what Gallery. What a wonderful thing, though. <laughs> but I love that you're complicit in the, in the horse crime because how much – you took these horses up and there's a, I've got a beautiful one here of a Clydesdale looking so proud with this forelock um, half over his eyes just looking straight at the camera. This shows that you have got a certain way with horses as well, Grace, as much as your father. Yes, I can understand the horse's body language, as my father has taught me, to capture that that um, special moment in time. It's only a split second where the horse is showing its presence and everything has to align. The ears have to communicate correctly by pointing forward. He's alert and he's, you know, um, happy. The stance has to be strong. The body language, you know, everything has to come together in this split second along with my lighting, <laughs> you know, my framing, my composition, all together in a fraction of a second. Never work with animals. And I did it about 20 different horses. So it was testing, but every result pushed me to the next one. Do another one, do another one. It's worth it. Yeah, wonderful. Where, where's that exhibition gone on from the Nishi Gallery? It went Gallery, to it? Tamworth and the Wesbold Gallery in Tamworth. Then it was part of the Head On Festival in Sydney. Um, then it is now currently some part of the exhibition is in the gallery, the Logan uh, Gallery in Queensland as part of a bigger show called Ponyland. They invited there me is there. a great attraction with horses, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, Angela, I want to talk about your early days. As uh, I read that you were one of the, the last official drover in the yes. ACT. Yeah. Who knew ACT even had drovers up until the 1980s? What was your That's role right. there? Um, well, I was... The droving in the ACT was for the abattoirs. So my job was to bring sheep and cattle from the airport through... Oaks Estate, which then they could have gone to Queanbeyan, take a left-hand turn and go to Queanbeyan, or turn right and go to their destination. Yeah, so... <clears throat> on stock routes, or where did you... It was on the road. Get out. On the road, yeah. How, what sort of how many road. head were you dealing with? Well, anything from 5,000, 8,000 lambs, and uh, up to 100 head of cattle at once. So well, in, in, in conjunction... When you say from the airport, they didn't fly in. No, no. no. <laughs> No, no, via, via the road. Via the road. Yeah, and you'd the road. bring them to the abattoirs out uh, yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. Well, you, did, this life of a drover is so romantic, isn't it, in the Australian psyche? Yeah. Did you feel that romance? It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you could. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, you were there with your dogs. Your dogs meant a, uh, played a big part in it. Um, yeah, I treasure my dogs. And understanding your dogs as good as your horse uh, so that you can, you don't want to be screaming at him, you know. You, I've had, a, I remember a good little dog called Billy, which was a girl, but I was giving it to her as a little pup 
fit in a, into your cup of, cup of coffee. It was that little? I said, take it back. It's not supposed to be weaned at this age. <laughs> anyway, it turned out to be what I call a lead dog. So I'd send her, <clears throat> when we got them over the, the low level crossing there, over the bridge, uh, I only showed her once or told her to go to the lead once and that was her job her role um, for the rest of her life. Uh, she had to go up the front and make sure they all turned to the right, not going to Queenbian, yeah. oh. sheep and Queenbian. And uh, yeah, a lot of people used to drive past and say, "Hey, matey, you got a lost dog up there? <laughs> it's, it's doing the job. Leave it alone." Yeah, because how did the Canberra community to re- react to having sheep on the roads? Like it seems dr- driving, driving well, through the city. Early in the, we was yeah, early in the well, morning. It was early in the morning. You didn't have to put signs up, like you no, end no, the signs. Didn't. No, <laughs> it's not exactly. I don't know how we got push. away with it, but we did. Yeah. Uh, horses in Canberra now. How do we treat our horses? And have we got a? a I think we've got the most amount of horses per capita per can, yeah. in Australia, or any city in Australia. Mm, mm. Are we? Are we a good horse capital? Uh, I think so. I think we. Uh, yeah, a lot of the when I've held clinics. Um, to to demonstrate or to help somebody with a horse, I've been asked, "Is there ever a horse that you you uh, can't help?" And I said, "No, I never come across a horse I can't help." Unfortunately, I can't say the same about people about their horse. They um, they're in a romance, in a wrong romance about their horse, and it's hard to convince that person that if he can change for the horse's benefit. Um, but they don't want to change. Some of them will, some of them don't. Some of them say, no, 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 I love my horse the way he bites me sometimes or he might kick the farrier because it's something they can talk about all the time. And um, But you, as I say, some people like to choose or have something to talk about. Their mm. horses won't go on the float, you know, yep. uh, little things like that. Yep. So that's their excuse to have a talk <laughs> instead well, of fixing the problem. Where are your horses now in this great urban environment? Where Where do you work from? Um, in B- Mugger Lane. Yep. I uh, still got the the riding school there, um, and the Queenbin Race Track. So you train thoroughbreds as well as just anyone wanting to yeah, ride. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for pleasure. Um, yeah. So that's what we do, and I'm also uh, starting for disabled. Um, Young chap, he's 50, 53, I think. Uh, his mother used to come, yeah, Dr. Julie used to come riding with us for about 15 so years. And unfortunately, her son is needs help now. So, I, I, uh, my daughter Louise broke in a little little cart pony. So, of a Saturday, we we give him, he comes with a carer, uh, and we give him uh, an hour's. Uh, drive around with a little cart. Yeah. Fabulous. And so Grace didn't go into the horse business no. or horse riding. In a different way. In a different, way. different, different way. way. You did de- as a yeah. professional photographer. Yeah. How many of the other costas are there? Uh, well, my eldest daughter's, um, she's helped me on the racetrack at the moment, which is absolutely brilliant. It makes life so easy for me to have her. I don't have to explain to her. She tells me this horse is going good or it's not going good yet, Dad. You know, because she's got the same feel as me with the horse. The other morning we we called, uh, we were halfway to the track and said, no, Dad, he's not ready yet. So we took him back home and done a little bit more work. So she's got a a natural instinct uh, with horses. My younger daughter, um, Lucy, she's uh, involved in carpentry. So joinery. But she started at the riding school. She used to teach kids when she was little. Yeah, yeah. Everybody did a little bit of the riding school. You couldn't have uh, uh, escaped if, if, yeah, yeah. if you wanted to. We're all part of it. <laughs> yes. We're all part of it. I'm not so lucky because I didn't have to go take it on to basketball or netball. <laughs> they all come with me. To yeah, the how fabulous. What yeah. a wonderful childhood yeah. if, without Grace's fear of the horse. Did I overcome my fear? Yeah. It was, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was only when I was growing up. Yeah. It's healthy respect. Yeah. Mr. Freeze has texted in saying, Hi, Lish, I had a really nice horse experience at Kyandra at midnight on Wednesday with my Brumby mates who sleep with me, walk with me and trust me enough to let me pat them. The young foal loves to pat and a rump. The mare and her newborn foal come right up for a pat in the snow in August last year. That, that whole, br- we're not even moving into the Brumby issue. 
but it's an amazing um, an amazing st- part of our culture, but also tricky to navigate. Mr. Mm. Freeze, I'm glad you've made the connection yes. uh, with those beautiful horses up there, but also, yeah, a bit of damage that they cause too, don't they? No. What Brumby, do you, what's your no. thought on the Brumby? Um, I've, I've ridden a lot up there. Um, they don't do damage. If, if, um, when you, if I would take you for a ride now, the first damage we would see is four wheel drive evidence. The first thing you'll see, then you've got to start looking for what damage the horses are done. I would be more concerned about the four wheel drives. Um, up there in the high country. Yeah. I'm not saying that there, there might be too many. Mm. That, that's yep. that's a different matter. Yep. But as far as damage goes, yep. there's four-wheel yep. drives do more damage than, than horses, horses do. Horses, yeah. And wild pigs. Wow. Um, but that's another that is uh, <laughs> whole new thing. <laughs> the great but, feral species of yeah, our land. Yeah, feral species. But horses, uh, as I say, um, they'll have a little, you might see at a water hole, a little little track. But it's always that size and doesn't go nowhere. A four-wheel drive goes through the wrong time of the year and uh, he gets bogged and, oh, big deal to go and get his mate with another one. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Yeah, so they, I'd be more concerned about what they do. So wrapping up, mm. what, what's next for you both? What other projects? You've, you've still got a long, long list of things to do. Are you writing a book? And on, on uh, this, how do you, because this, this has to be passed down, this knowledge yeah. and, and skill. I certainly would like to write a book um, because I think it would help the horse industry all over, from the racing industry to pleasure riding through trail riding through anything to do with horses because understanding them in a way they want to be understood, it is so, it's too simple to neglect, you know. Maybe you need to combine Grace's knowledge of the photography industry and, and f- film and video, mm, mm. and make videos. We're going to move move it forward to, to teach. Yeah, mm. so, so oh, I'm, I'm I'm an ideas person. <laughs> yeah, <that's a> great <laughs> idea. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but see, the thing, the the, uh, the if if you have a big problem with a horse, sometimes it's so so quickly fixed. The people say, show me what you did. What did you do? That's how simple it can be. If somebody's prepared to look and observe, it is that quick. That um, It's not a big, you've got to spend four weeks, four months, four years. And I often hear about, oh, I've spent years on this horse and he's improving. Well, if you may approach him this way, you'll fix it in five minutes. And if you can t- continue f- helping that horse every five minutes, you've got a good horse for the rest of his life and the rest of your life. It's it's a great relationship, yeah. but but it, it's got to be simple because horses are simple. <laughs> well, I think you might have a special a special connection with them, Angelo, to to be able to to see that and, and teach you. it. What a wonderful Grace for you next. Uh, I'm creating more horse photography. Um, so I'm creating my new series and I'm doing a major collaboration with, um, the wonderful ladies at Moxham and Whitney. We're collaborating on a horse headdress. It's wow. How's the horse going to handle that? Oh, we'll <laughs> soon find out, but <laughs> it'll be fine. Flowers, ears. Yeah, it's going to be, what? not going to be not a edible? masterpiece. Yeah. Oh, it will be. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. <laughs> and I'm starting a new series, Horses in Headdress, documenting the cultural and traditional head costumes that we put on horses from different countries. So that's going to be the next big exhibition in maybe a couple of years. Oh, but fabulous. Um, well, thank you so much, both so much for welcome. sharing your stories you. of, of you. that one. And, and next time we'll have to get a horse in the studio. I can do it. I can arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll photograph it. <laughs> Straight from the horse's Smells. mouth, we're going to call that one. Thank you both for coming in. Thank Lovely you, Lee. Thank you, Lee, for giving us the opportunity to have a chat.